Let me read to you a passage from the 14th chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 21 to 26. It's the Gospel for Monday of the fifth week of Eastertide. St. John writes, Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Judas, not the Iscariot, said to him, Master, then what happened that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have told you. That's from the 14th chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 21 to 26. What does it suggest to us? Well, prior to his election to the chair of St. Peter, Pope John Paul II was not only a bishop and cardinal, but virtually a professional philosopher, with creative writings in philosophy to his credit. Probably his best known philosophical work was The Acting Person, that's the title of the book, and one of the central points developed in that book is the centrality of free action, free action in the understanding of the human person. The human person expresses and develops his nature most distinctively in his deliberate act, in his action, especially as in community. Ever since Descartes, the philosopher Descartes, whose philosophy starts with the lone individual conscious of his own thought. What has been seen as most decisive for man is cognition. Man is the one who thinks and who reasons. Carol Wojtyla, who became Pope, starts rather with man as the person in community and in action. What is decisive for man is his action. Now, consider the emphasis that our Lord gives to discipleship in our Gospel passage today that I read earlier. He emphasizes action. It is not just a matter of being in our Lord's company, nor is it simply a matter of receiving his teaching and his commandments. One must actively observe them. This is the test of true love for the Master. There is a work to be done, an action to be performed, and that action is the observance of Christ's commandments. Christ's disciple is characteristically an acting person, not just a thinking one. He does not just believe and dwell in Christ's company. He is indeed, of course, in the company of Christ and his disciples, but then characteristically he acts. He, put, he puts into action what the Master expects of him. He does not just say, Lord, Lord, but actually does the will of the Father. His works 
the fruit of love, are central to his life as a true disciple of Christ. Obedient action, obedient action is at the heart of the Christian religion. It is the test of our love. In the letter to the Hebrews, we read that on entering the world, the Son of God said, Here I am, O God, I come to do your will. And during his agony in the garden, we remember, our Lord asked his Father that the cup be taken away from him, but added, Not as I, but as you will. It is in this sense that John Henry Newman, the great 19th century writer of theology and religion, wrote that authority and obedience are of the essence of true religion, which is to say the recognition of the authority of God and our constant readiness to obey him in our action. The one who loves will show his love by his obedience. This will be real love, and it will be rewarded by God. Consider what our Lord tells us in today's Gospel of what God will do if we observe his commandments. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. So God the Father and God the Son will come and make their home with the one who keeps Christ's word. And this, of course, will happen by the power of the Holy Spirit, who is specifically mentioned in our Gospel reading today. The Holy Spirit will teach us Christ's word and remind us of all he told us. The implication of all this is that <clears throat> whatever be the degree of our faith and what we might consider to be our love for Christ and God, the critical thing will be what we actually do about it. It is our obedience to the will of Christ that will be decisive in our relationship with God. And it is this which will be rewarded by God with a growing intimacy with Him. In our Christian life, let us resolve to act. This includes actively seeking to know the Word of Christ and its true meaning as it comes to us in the Scriptures and the Church's teaching, and then acting on it. We must observe the word we receive. The Christian is distinguished by two things. Firstly, faith in Christ and his word, and then obedience in putting it into practice. We must have his commandments in our hearts, and then faithfully observe them in our lives.